Hi, welcome back to how to write a platformer game in Java. In this video, we're going to talk about scrolling. So let me show you what this will look like. Okay, so if I walk to the right, then notice the screen is going to follow me and scroll. If I walk to the left, it will scroll back. Um, it'll, it, you can, In theory, you can also scroll up. If I were to have a ladder or something, I can uh, also scroll up and down. Um, so this is scrolling left and right. So for example, if I were to jump down to the cliff, it will actually scroll down with me and I'm just falling infinitely. Um, so yeah, so that's scrolling. We're going to talk about how to do that in this video. Okay, so this is a little bit tricky, but I think once you understand it, uh, it's not too bad here. So here's some pictures. Um, so here's the, there's two things you want to think about. There's the, the big rectangle is basically the the game map of the the entire game, which is much bigger than the the visible part of the the game, which is our window. So this is the small rectangle is the window that we currently see is the window that we play the game on, and so that's the visible part of the game, um, and um, and and these two right here are not visible. So in other words, uh, uh, we don't see these the these two bricks right here, and so as the player leaves the as the player move across, then we want the uh, the, our window to scroll so that to review the other parts of the game. Okay, so so there's a couple things here. The the origin zero zero is top left corner, and that's the origin of the of the entire game. Uh, but uh, we also have we're gonna create a couple of variables called view x and view y that will represent the top left corner of the window, which is the smaller the the, the visible part of the screen of the game. Um, and so what is view x and view y? Well, view x, view y is basically the top left corner of, of our window, and then we want to basically translate uh, that around so that we can see the other parts of the game. So if I move the view x, view y, then we we can see the other part of the the game. Okay, so how do how do we do this? Um, well, so so again, as an example here, right? If I move uh, view x, view y over to the right, then uh, then I'll see this uh, this crate, and then I'll see less of that brick, and I still won't see this one. Uh, but that's the idea. The idea is that this thing right here, uh, we want it to be able to uh, to translate. Um, okay, so it turns out that we're going to use a method called translate, and the way it works is actually kind of uh, backwards. It turns out that we actually don't move the visible part of this uh, of, of the this this window right here, the window of what we see for our game. We actually don't move that. It turns out what we move is actually we move. The entire coordinates, the the entire plane coordinates of the the game map. Um, in other words, so this is the true origin, right? This is the, the the entire coordinate plane of the game. And when we translate, we translate the origin to a new origin x and a new origin y. And so we're actually translating the the game map, not the the actual visible uh, uh, window here. So the way we want to think about this is that. You imagine that this is like the the window that we play the game on is just like a camera, and we're looking down from top. Imagine this is like a top down game or something where where the camera view is here, and we're looking down on on the floor. And you imagine that the this window, the small window, is actually anchored to the ceiling, so it can't move. And so if I want to scroll, I actually I can't move that camera view. What I can move is I actually gonna move the the word the game word beneath me. So it's kind of backwards, but we're actually gonna move the um, the, the the true origin coordinates uh, beneath me, so that I can see the other parts uh, of the game map. So, look, uh, so so that means that so for example, one one thing is that all these um, as, as, assuming this game is static, everything here is st standing still. When I scroll, uh, so all these objects right here are actually been drawn relative to the true origin. So everything is always drawn with with respect to this origin right here, and so when I Translate. I'm shifting this coordinate. When I shift it, everything else shift along with it, and that's how I see. Um, that's how I, and then the camera is, is standing still, so we can see the other parts uh, of the game map. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. And then, uh, so yeah. So the the visible window, this right here, doesn't move. Um, it's just we move the game beneath the the camera. Okay, so um, so let's do an example. Suppose that we have a, a visible window, um, view x, view y. We want to move across 15 pixels horizontal and say 5 pixels down, and uh, so that we can, we want to scroll over so we can see more of the game. And so to do this, we need to, again this thing doesn't move, so we need to 
translate the uh, the true origin relative to the this position. In other words, we want to move the origin so that it's now moved left by 15 and up by 5. So it, the, the, the origin is moved left by 15 and then up by 5. So we are going to be moving the world beneath. And so when I do that, then this uh, window will see uh, the other parts of the game map. So that's how you want to kind of visualize that. Um, and so the translate, the, this translate function, we, we, we want to call it translate negative 15, negative 5 because we want to translate the origin uh, basically the opposite direction of where we want to scroll. So that's why there's the negatives here. And then our visible screen, which doesn't move, uh, now see a new part of the map. Okay, so that's basically how you want to visualize it. But how do we do this in practice? Well, we need to do come up with boundary and margins for our, our window. So here's the, some example. Uh, so here's again, here's a visible map, uh, and there's the right boundary, there's the bottom boundary, there's also the top boundary, and also the left boundary. There's four boundaries on our window, uh, and I'll just do these two boundaries just to make it simple. And so th that's the right boundary right here, and then there's also a right margin, and then there's a, that's the bottom boundary, and there's also a bottom margin. Similarly for the left boundary, left margin, and then also top boundary, top margin. Uh, and so, cause the way it works is that, if the player is inside of the the boundary, then there's no scrolling. So if I were to move around here, and I don't leave the these uh, dotted lines, then there's no scrolling. But as soon as the player leaves the one of these boundary, then the window has to adjust to compensate for it to keep the player still within the boundary, right? And so the way we do that is that we have to move a view x, view y, or more accurately, we we want to translate the origin so that view x, view y is moved uh, so that we can uh, uh, keep the, the play within the boundary. Okay, let's see if we can do a quick example here. Uh, so so here's basically the algorithm. If the player leaves the boundary, any of the four boundaries, then we need to compute the new view x and view y to maintain the margin. So if I move outside of this, I need to, to move view x so that uh, so that I'm still within the boundary because everything will, will shift along as I as I as I scroll over, and so again I leave the boundary. I compute the new view x, view y to maintain that margin, and then I do a translate. In other words, I translate in the opposite direction, so that uh, so that my whole so that the 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 world below me move in the opposite direction, and my window now um, just compensated for my movement and keep me within the boundary still. Okay, so here's a quick example here. So here, here imagine here's me, right? And I'm going to move outside of the uh, the right boundary. That means I need to move my view x by the by the same amount. This difference right here actually, the right boundary minus the the right boundary of my sprite minus the right boundary of my window. That's that offset. My view x has to move to the right by that same offset so that I can still maintain the the window to be um to cover my sprite so that uh, he's within the right boundary, not outside of it. And then if he if he were to move down, then the same thing. This offset right here, the bottom of the sprite minus the bottom boundary of the window, that offset needs to you need to adjust view y by that same offset so that I can keep my uh, player in the window. So here's what it looks like when I offset everything. So that notice how as soon as I I, I leave it, then uh, my when I compute my view x, view y, it will move out of the way so that so that now my player is still within the boundary. So my, as I'm moving around the game, my player is never going to be inside of this boundary or inside of this boundary because I'm always scrolling to adjust for it. So that's what translation does. It, it moves the, the the coordinate so that I'm always within the the boundary of uh, of my window, and then I'll see the other part of the of the map. Okay, so here's the last thing I want to show is that this right boundary, uh, here's some formula. We need to be able to compute the right boundary, the bottom boundary, all the four boundaries. So the right boundary is view x. My view x is the x, x uh, coordinates here, plus the width of the window, and then minus the right margin. So that's how you can compute the, the right boundary. So in the same way, bottom boundary is view y plus the height of the window minus the bottom margin. So that's how we can compute these boundaries. And as soon as we see that my left, right, uh, my boundaries of my sprite 
uh, leaves those boundaries, then I can make my translation accordingly. Okay, so that's kind of confusing, but hopefully that makes sense. Uh, let's uh, look at the code. So I'm actually not gonna. Actually, one last thing I want to say is that uh, it's important that when we have a game that has like text on the screen, like the number of lives or your score, that we need to uh, position it relative to view X and view Y. We don't want to position it with relative to the origin because then we might move out of it and we might not see this text. So this text has to be positioned relative to view X, view Y. So that way, when we move, it will scroll with the player and 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 doesn't leave it behind. So that's something we we'll see later. Okay, I think that's basically it. I want to show you now the code. I'm not gonna uh, type this up. Uh, I think I'm just gonna give you the code here. Um, so I put right margin is 400, and typically the the right margin is usually is a little bit bigger because we want to see a lot of what's in front of us. So we want to scroll. Uh, so these don't have to be the same. The left margin is a little bit smaller, uh, but again, uh, the point is that these can be different. Oh, they can be the same. It's up to you, but. That's typically what we like to do, and then we can have a bottom and top margin, but we're going to keep both of them to be the same. So the vertical margin is 40, um, and uh, and then something I want to point out is that I'm going to write a, a scroll method. So here it is, right below draw here. This is a scroll method, and the important thing here is that I have to call scroll right away. I, the first thing I sh before I draw anything else, I need to call scroll. It's the first thing I call because when I call scroll. I'm translating the, the the coordinates of the map so that everything is drawn relative to that translation. So this has to be done early. If you do it later, it will not work. Uh, so that's so that's it. I call this, and then let's look at the code for scroll. Okay. So again, we talked we saw some formula earlier here, but we have to compute the right boundary. Right boundary, as we saw in the in the slides, view x, right, view x, view y. Initially, I initialized them to be zero. Um, uh, to coincide with the true origin. And then the right boundary is simply view x plus the width of the screen minus the right margin. So that we saw that. Uh, so that's my right boundary. Now here's how I scroll. If my player get right is bigger than the right boundary, in other words, if I, I go outside the right boundary, so I need to offset that. So if I go outside the right boundary, then I compute a new view x to compensate for that offset. And how do I do that? Well, I take the right boundary of my player minus the right boundary of the, the the window that offset that difference I need to add that difference to my view X so that I can adjust my view X to compensate accordingly same thing with left boundary um, and then if I go to the left side of the left boundary then I need to compute the offset again this is uh, you can look at the code here later but uh, and then I need to subtract if I'm going left I need to subtract if I go right I need to add uh, same thing with top and bottom if my bottom of my play is bigger than the bottom of the boundary, again I need to compute the offset and I need to add it to view y. And the same thing for the, the top boundary. So this is changing view y. And then at the end of all this, I translate in the opposite direction so that I can go the opposite direction so I can uh, move the world beneath me and then my camera will see a new part of the screen. So that's basically how a score works. Um, yeah, it's kind of a uh, it's confusing and you you kind of wonder why this is done here but it turns out that this is based on uh, corner transformation if you've done some um, uh, some matrix uh, math linear algebra um, turns out that this is actually really powerful for um, for doing other coordinates uh, transformation uh, when we do things like if I want to rotate a tank or something uh, this is actually a very nice way to do this we can actually do do this individually to each of the, the objects on the screen, but that's uh, beyond the scope of this. Uh, anyway, so yeah, so that's how that uh, scrolling works. Okay, thanks for watching.